This balloon, its payload is around £2,000. It has 16 solar panels. A weather balloon gets the temperature, the air pressure, the wind speed and so forth. Why would you need 16 solar panels? It's said to be three buses across. Very, very large, much bigger than a weather balloon. My name is Dr. Andrew Hammond and I'm going to debunk some spy balloon theories for Wired. In the world of intelligence and espionage, almost anything is possible, but it's highly unlikely that this was a weather balloon. It's quite interesting, the flight path that this took. It left from the island of Hainan in the south of China. It drifted across the country. It goes over important Air Force bases in Montana, in Nebraska, Missouri, until it got to South Carolina and it was shot down. He got it! He just shot it. It could be a coincidence that it went over an important base that has intercontinental ballistic missiles. And intelligence and espionage, sometimes there's coincidences, quite often there's not. One of the other explanations out there is that this is a practice run for a future military attack. Attaching a, a bomb to a balloon, it's not a particularly effective means to wage modern warfare. You've got planes, you've got missiles that can be fired from one continent to another. Why put it on a balloon that's very slow moving? Doesn't make any sense. Often when you want to attack somebody, you probe their defenses. You can even think about this if you watch two boxers. They're probing each other, where are they weak? There's an entity called NORAD, N-O-R-A-D. This is the defense of the environment around North America. If you're thinking about this as an outsider, what a great way to test NORAD, to see how effective they are, to see what they pick up on. I think the amount of mental gymnastics that you would have to do to make this a UFO-based explanation would be incredible. Let's just go with a simple one. The Chinese said it's theirs. It's a Chinese balloon. Came over the United States. It was shot down. Look for the simplest possible explanation. There's a common misconception that balloons have never been used for intelligence purposes before. Balloons starts off 1794, the Battle of Fleurs and the French Revolutionary Wars. Fast forward, the Civil War. Lincoln's worried that Washington could be captured with a potentially devastating effect on morale in the North. They're used to try to make sure that Washington is not captured, that it's not surprised. We're also using the Second World War as an obstacle over London to try to disrupt German bombers during the Blitz. The Cold War, there's various balloon programs. The United States, for example, had a program, Project Moby Dick 1956, to send balloons up over the Soviet Union to try to get a picture of what they were up to. Can they see inside your house? They probably could. I guess the question is, why would they want to? They might be interested in what the vice president's up to. They're not going to be interested in what the average person is up to. You can get incredible resolution. I say this as someone that used to be in the Royal Air Force and who used to spend time looking at aerial reconnaissance images. I've heard that the resolution, it can capture up to 10 centimeters from that height of 60,000 feet. That's probably what military nation state satellites can capture. Other things we can think about is what can it hear? What kind of communications are being sent that the balloon can pick up human language or encrypted human language? Another one that's often overlooked is what we call measurements and signature intelligence. What can you smell? What can you detect in the atmosphere? Gases, vapors, particles, dust. 1949, the Soviet Union detonates the nuclear weapon. The stunning news has the atom bomb and has exploded it. They've used information intelligence from people that they had inside the Manhattan Project, built their own bomb and they detonate it. How did the United States find out about it? It was the detection of nuclear particles in the air. That's how they knew the Soviets had the bomb. This is quite common in the history of intelligence and espionage. You wait, you watch. Who are they speaking to? Who are their contacts? Is this a spy ring or is it just one person? This is something that investigators, intelligence analysts, mole hunters do all the time. The more you let it go on, the more you can see the tentacles 
of the espionage. It's something that happens every day in international politics. It's part of the world around us. Maybe you don't see it, but it's taking place almost everywhere.